Two starts for Carey Price, two losses. Both times the Canadians were shut out. Why aren't they scoring? Different theories as to why I feel very strongly about mine. If you want to hear and see what I have to say, stick around. The Sick Podcast is coming up. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Maradero. The Sickest Montreal Canadiens Podcast. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadiens win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Marinero, the sick podcast brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense like me, by nature, like me. The beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions the way I do in order to make their mark the way I made my mark. And brought to you by Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you go back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. I love their uh, their ribs, by the way. Very, very good. I love the chicken tenders. I like the buffalo wings. I like the triple-A nine-ounce steak. I love the uh, millefeuille dessert. I love it all. All right, okay. I know a lot of Canadians fans are in loving the result of the two games in which Carey Price played. The Canadians on Friday night in Carey Price's first game since the 7th of July lost by a score of 3 to nothing to the New York Islanders, a game in which they outshot the Islanders 44 to 20. And last night versus the Minnesota Wild, the Canadians lost by a score of 2 to nothing. Two games, opposition 5 goals for, Montreal Canadiens 0 goals against. And now a lot of people are saying, why can't they score in front of Carey Price? And by the way, this goes back to last year in the Stanley Cup Final. If you recall, the last game that he played, Game 5 of the Stanley Cup Final, the Tampa Bay Lightning won that game by a score of 1 to nothing. And there too, the Canadians didn't score a goal. There's a lot of different theories. Some people are telling me that Price is so good that the only way the Canadians won't win a game is if they don't score. So they want to tank on purpose because they want the first pick, and that's why they didn't score in the two games in which Price played. What? What? Because Price is so good, folks. I don't want to lack respect. Obviously not. We know that when he's on top of his game, he's fantastic. We also know that in three of the last four regular seasons, he wasn't a top 40 or 45 goalie in the league. He was great in the first three rounds of the playoffs last year. He missed the entire season. He's played two games. His rhythms are a little bit off, which is a little bit normal. Um, that theory, you can throw it out the window. Whoever actually thinks that, that he is so good that the Canadians will end up winning games because he's so good, uh, so they're trying to lose on purpose? No. And players don't try to lose on purpose, all right? The way a tank happens, there's a couple of ways it happens. Number one, a coach doesn't play his best players as much as he should. Number two, a coach doesn't put his best players in positions where they will succeed. He actually puts his players in different chairs and different roles in uncomfortable positions. Number three, a coach doesn't follow the matchup game. And number four, if players know that they're completely out of it and the season is winding down the way it is now, obviously it's going to be very hard to get that second effort unless there's something on the line. And right now there's nothing on the line with the exception of trying to play well in front of Carey Price and trying to win for Carey Price. He's their teammate. They love him. Uh, he's been through a lot personally and professionally. He's battled a lot of adversity. They admire him in the way that he's been able to rebound. So for sure, they like to play well in front of him. And that's what I think is going on. So for all of you who are saying, ah, you know what? The Canadians suck. They haven't scored in front of Price. Listen, clearly, they're not a very good team, right? And right now, they're statistically the second worst team in the National Hockey League, just two points better than the Arizona Coyotes, who, by the way, have 
a game in hand. The Canadians have five games left in their season. Arizona has six. But here's the deal. This is what's going on. The Canadians want to do so well in front of Carey Price that they don't want to give up a lot of shots. They don't want to give up a lot of scoring chances. They don't want to see him get lit up. And so when you're doing that and you have that in mind and you're playing according to that, what happens? You don't take extra chances. You don't pinch in. Uh, and as a result, you end up giving up less breakaways. You give up less odd man rushes. In the two games that Kerry Price played, with the exception of the goal that happened on a mishap by Corey Schooneman twice, he mishandled the puck and then he fanned on it and it led to a 3-0. on How many breakaways have you seen in the two games versus the Islanders and versus the Wild? How many two-on-ones? How many three-on-twos? How many grade A scoring chances? I didn't count many. Now, think of all the other games the Canadians have played going back about 10 games or so, going back at the end of March, for example. Let's take a look at this chart. Look at this. On the 21st of March, uh, the Canadians played the Carolina Hurricanes. Was it the 21st? Hold on a second. I'm just, uh, yeah, it was the uh, the 21st of March, I believe. They played the Carolina Hurricanes. Carolina won by a score of four to nothing. Still not sure it was the 21st, by the way. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm sure our people will check it. We'll, we'll look into it and, uh, and will tell us. But anyway, look at the shots. How many shots did Carolina have on that night? You want to know how many shots they had? By the way, it was the 31st. I knew I made a mistake there. Okay, it was the 31st of March, okay? 31st of March, they lost by a score of four to nothing, okay? Carolina had 44 shots. They won the game four nothing. A couple of nights before that, on the 29th of March, Florida had 46 shots. They won by a score of seven to four. A couple of nights after that, uh, versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Canadians win in a shootout. Tampa Bay had 41 shots. Ottawa. The Senators beat the Canadians 6-3. The Senators had 32 shots. The Canadians beat the Devils 7-4. The Devils had 37 shots. They lost 3-2 to Toronto. Toronto had 40 shots. They lost 4-2 to Winnipeg. Winnipeg had 35 shots. They lost 5-1 in Columbus. Columbus had 31 shots. They lost 3 0 with Carey Price versus the Islanders. The Islanders had 20 shots. In all the games prior to that, that I showed you on this chart, the Canadians didn't give up anywhere in the 20s. The least amount of shots they had given up was 31 to Columbus. And then one night after they give up 20 to the Islanders, they give up 41 to Washington. You're going to say, well, Tony, Washington's a powerhouse. The Minnesota Wild are a better team than the Washington Capitals so far in the regular season. A better team. They have more points. They're deeper. Minnesota, 30 shots on Carey Price. So of all the games I just showed you in this chart and all the games I just talked to you about, the two games in which the Canadians gave up the least amount of shots were the two games that Carey Price played in. And actually, the game versus the Islanders, if I want to be technical, I could actually say they gave up 19 because the 20th was in an empty net. They are insulating Price so much. They are protecting Price so much. And yes, it coincides with them not being a good team. And yes, it coincides with Nick Suzuki battling some injuries right now, having some therapy days, playing the games, but not at 100%. This is why they're not scoring goals. It takes me back to the Claude Julien era. Remember Claude Julien era where we would say, ah, you know, the offense, they don't have this, they don't have that. They don't have a top 50 in scoring. They don't have a top 60, top 70. They don't have a 40 goal score. They don't have a 35 goal score. They don't have this. They were playing so much defense. It was defense oriented that it was hard to manufacture offense. They were trying to find that right balance. And that's what's going on right now with Carey Price. So for all of you who are saying, 
In two games, they haven't scored for Carey Price. Is this a joke? For all of you who are saying, ah, you know what, I, uh, poor guy, this, that, whatever, all that stuff. The Canadians are protecting Price. They protected him by giving him the game versus the Islanders on home ice to bounce back after a couple of bad efforts as his first game. They're protecting him in the amount of shots they're giving up. They're protecting him in the amount of scoring chances they're giving up. They're protecting him in terms of limiting breakaways, two-on-ones, three-on-twos, odd-number situations. They're protecting Carey Price. And by the way, I don't have a problem with it because if they move forward with Carey Price, either for his confidence, it's good that they protect him and that he doesn't get obliterated with goals, or whether they want to move on from him and, and, and trade him, the last thing you want is him giving up five and six and seven goals a game. So it's good that they're protecting Carey Price. But that's what's going on. Marinero for MatrixHomeFitness.ca. Bring it home. Discover a club-quality workout in the comfort of your own home. Visit MatrixHomeFitness.ca like Price has been getting over the past couple of games. Every game, game action is a workout. And he talked about his weight being a 216, wants to bring it down even more next season. So there's... Less weight and less strain on his knees, of course. Betway, you ready for this one? For the love of the game, sign up and deposit on Betway for a 100% deposit bonus. The easiest sports book for Canadians. E-transfers are accepted like that. And I'm going to give you a pick. Are you ready? If Carey Price plays on Thursday night when the Canadians host Minnesota, uh, pardon me, host Philadelphia, that is, not Minnesota. They just lost to Minnesota. If Terry Price plays on Thursday night when they host Philadelphia, the Montreal Canadiens will win that game. I don't know how many games they're going to win between now and the end of the year. I do feel strongly about them beating Philadelphia. And by the way, by the way, I think it's awesome when someone is a fan of a team. I think it's awesome that there are Montreal Canadiens fans out there and you, you stick with your team through thick and thin from the beginning to the end. But I can't figure out how people are just so upset that they've now lost six games in a row and they're so upset that, you know what, they, uh, oh, Carey Price lost both games, they can't get him a win. I think they'll win versus the Flyers. But if they don't, folks, it's okay. There's five games left in their season. They're pretty. They're guaranteed of a top four pick in the draft, which, by the way, it was announced today that the NHL draft lottery will take place on Tuesday, May 10th. So Tuesday, May 10th, you're going to find out, are the Canadians getting the first pick overall, the second, the third, or the fourth? By finishing last overall... They have the highest probability. There's no guarantee they'll get the number one pick overall, but it will give them the highest probability of having that number one pick overall. If they want Shane Wright, but they don't get the first pick, they get the second pick, and the team that picks first drafts Shane Wright, then they're not going to get who they want. Don't you want your team to get who they want? Don't you want your team to get the player that they have the most scouting on, that the scouting department is convinced that he's the guy that they should draft? If the answer to that is yes, and the logical answer is yes, then relax. The season is over. You know, back in the month of January, if you were looking at the St. Louis Blues and you were saying, oh, the St. Louis Blues many, several years ago, were last overall come the first week of January, and they had a coaching change. They turned it around. They went on an unbelievable run. They went in the playoffs. They got hot. They went to the final. They beat the Bruins in seven games. They won the Stanley Cup to the tune of Gloria, Gloria, and all that stuff. And then what a what a beautiful story. Once the Canadians were mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, which I think happened, give or take, three weeks ago, at that point, if you're a fan, a real fan, you have to want them to lose so that they get the best pick possible or the chance at the, the chance at the best pick possible. I want them to be so bad for a couple of years so that at that point they could end up being after that, they could end up being so good for an extended period of time. People that say to me, you're 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 a cynic or you're negative or you're this or you're that. No, no. 
I want them to have great draft picks over the next couple of years. And if possible, a franchise player in Connor Bedard, who at 16 years of age, when Connor McDavid was the same age, Connor Bedard scored like 28 more goals or whatever it is and had 100 points to McDavid's 99, which McDavid did, I think, in 56 games, and Bedard did it in 62. Long story short, Connor Bedard is being labeled as a generational talent. Crosby was labeled as a generational talent. Ovechkin was labeled as a generational talent. Connor McDavid was labeled as a generational talent. And guess what? They're all generational talents. So I say... It's okay if the Canadians lose the rest of the season. And even better yet, it's even better if they're worse next year than they are this year. Tell your friends about this podcast because this podcast gets better every day. No hard feelings, folks. I love the Habs as much as you do. Uh, This is just my opinion. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Sick Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. And if you want to listen to us whenever you want on your own time, listen to us via the iHeartRadio app. I'm Marinaro. This is no joke. It's a sick podcast. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature, and Lakage. If the last time you went to Lakage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakage. The menu will surprise you.